our last topic, which will also be our last topic in uh, 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 in uh, geometric optics will be what happens if we end up having compound lenses. So compound lenses are where you have two different lenses between the source of light over here and your eye on the other side. Um, so in, in order to be able to analyze these, again we're going to assume that both things are thin lenses, so we're not worried about the thickness of the lens, uh, that the way that you analyze it, you'll end up looking first at the, the object and the closest uh, lens first. You end up doing it for that pair you do exactly the same calculations we've done before so you end up having your uh, the object distance is how far it's physically in front of just this the last lens. Um, then you end up finding your image distance. However once we do that with the second lens the image position not the image distance the image position becomes the object position for the second lens. So in general it's not true that your object distance and your image distance is the same. It's where it's physically located for your image will be the physical location of the object for the second one. One thing that can happen depending on how your lenses are set up is possible for the image from the first one to end up being past the second, uh, the, the second lens. In that situation, your second object distance is negative, which is the only way you can get a negative number for an object distance because for the first one, it's closest, the object has to be on one side of, the, of that for light to get through to the other side. So the first one's always going to be positive. But if we have compound lenses, the second one does is not necessarily going to be so. It could end up being on the opposite side. So, uh, but that that's the position of the image is the position of the object for the second lens. And so then you convert that to what your object distance is, how far in front, assuming it is in front, if it's not, it's negative, but how far in front of the second lens your op the image was and then you use that as the new object distance then you calculate your next image so uh, in order to be so in that scenario uh, that ends up allowing you to find where your final focus is I'm sorry uh, to end up finding magnification magnification is multiplicative so and you find what the magnification is for the first pair, so it's minus di over do for the first pair, then you'd multiply that by minus your image distance divided by the object distance. Again, remembering the object distance could be negative in certain cases for the second lens. Uh, so it's your image distance minus the image distance over the object distance for the second one. You multiply those two together, that gives you your total magnification. So then the rest of what I did was a uh, worked out example. So uh, we suppose we have an object that is located 45 centimeters in front of a, uh, a diverging lens with a focal length of negative 30 centimeters. And the diverging lens is 65 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a focal length of a positive 20 centimeters and we want to end up finding what the magnification is for that whole collection. So in order to do so, we end up looking at the closest pair. So the object is 45 centimeters in front. So that's your object distance for, the, for that nearer one, the one with negative focal length. Uh, so to find your image distance, we plug it in. It's again, again, it's the same equation we had for, for mirrors. Uh, so we compute what our image distance was, and the image distance you find is negative 18 centimeters. So what that number means is if your image distance is positive, it's on the opposite side of the lens. The image distance was negative here, so it's on the same side as the object. So it's 18 centimeters behind the lens rather than 18 centimeters. Positive 18 would be 18 centimeters in front of the lens. So the position 
would end up being 18 centimeters on that side of your of the diverging lens. So then to calculate what your object distance is for the next lens, we end up finding how far it is in front of the second lens, the converging lens, of positive 20 centimeters. So that so it's the 65 centimeters from the 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 converging lens to the diverging lens plus the additional 16 centimeters because it's that 18 centimeters excuse me that's how far it was behind the diverging lens was your original image so the sum of those is 83 centimeters that's what we end up saying our object distance is for the second one for the converging lens so uh, uh, so then you plug those numbers in you find your image distance for the second one is a positive 26.3 centimeters so the image in this case is on the side behind the uh, the, the the converging lens. Um, the magnification for the first one is minus the image distance of the first one divided by the object distance, the physical object, 45 centimeters in front. That gave me a positive 0.40. Uh, so it was an upright uh, magnification, uh, and for the the, the second lens, uh, we end up calculating its magnification. Again, it's minus the image distance over the object distance. Your image distance was positive 26.3. The object distance, again, was the object distance for that lens. It was the positive 83 centimeters. That quotient gives me negative 0.317. Then to find your total magnification, you multiply them together. You get a negative 0.126. So, negative 1.26 is really, really close to negative 1 eighth. So uh, it's effectively an eighth the size, so it's shrunk by a factor of eight, and it's upside down. So the negative means it's inverted, just like it was for, uh, for a mirror. Um, all right, so that concludes what we're gonna end up looking at for, uh, for geometric optics. Uh, what we're going to be doing next, it's very, very far afield from this. So that what we've done so far is pretty much, t t t you know, step by step. Things are closely related. You know, we did a little bit of a jump from uh, where we introduced magnetic fields, but then, you know, light is electric and magnetic fields together. So everything sort of is like that. This last thing is going to be a massive shift. What we're going to be doing next for the rest of the semester is we're going to end up looking at what happens, what nuclei are in the centers of, of atoms and, 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 and ions and such. Um, we'll look at what they are, what they do, and uh, why some things are stable, why some things aren't. We'll look at uh, nuclear reactions. We'll look at nuclear decay. Uh, and we'll also end up taking a look at uh, the life cycle of stars because that ends up dovetailing into some of those, uh, those ideas as well. So that's going to be what we'll end up doing really for the rest of the semester. Um, and uh, all right.